In this video, we're going to show you how you would take a DXF file and import it into the PM1 and create the pattern. So this is my files for an AMS 210EN, 10 by 1 Velcro. You have to have this in millimeters. I use a program called DeltaCAD. It's a very inexpensive program and really can do anything I need here. It has any shapes that we can, that we can do. Uh, with this, you can you can open up any file, any one of these file types. You can import uh, JPEG bitmaps. So it's a pretty powerful program for basically under hundred dollars. Anyway, so here is the pattern that I want to do. This is in, in millimeters. If you look at this. Is uh, it's in millimeters, so you can see that it's 245 millimeters by 20.32. That's my stitch size. This point here is the the blue line here is the origin of the sewing machine. So I have that as a reference because when the clamp was made, I want the pattern to be shifted back from the home position just so that you have more support with the uh, clamp. So anyway, it's saved as a DXF file. I'm just going to close this out because you can't have the file open. And we've opened up this file here, and then I'm going to go to open, and I can look and see where uh, where my file is. So obviously, we need to know where your file is located, and here it is. So now it's questioning what model machine we're at. And this is what it's pulled, pulled up from that. I'm going to use the PM1 origin instead of the DXF origin in case they don't match. Uh, I'm not going to change the order of the elements. And I'm not going to add the points. At this point. You actually could, but for my purposes, I don't, I don't want to do that. I want to be able to pick and choose. So now it's located. Now if you see here, this this line here is the origin of the sewing machine and we're actually down here a little bit so I need to bring this up so I want to see where my points are so I'm just going to go to key put input add and I'm going to pick configuration point move and I'm just going to touch that point and you can see up here that it says it's minus 43.95 so across looks good and the x-axis looks good I just need to bring the pattern up 43.95 millimeters. So I'm going to go to parallel move and 43.95 and I'm shifting the whole pattern and you can see this this is in the right location now. This is my uh, reference point. I'm actually going to take this away. I don't need it anymore and that's why I don't add the stitches in at that startup screen because I'm going to remove these lines. These are just for my reference. Moving the center line away. And now I just basically have my regular pattern. So now at this point, the pattern's in, it's the right scale. I could just do normal stitching and touch each line and change whatever stitch count I want. I'm going to view the stitch point on. So here now, notice. It started here, it picked this up at a point. Because what's going to happen is when you bring this DXF file in, the order of elements and the direction may not be what you need. So you're going to have to tweak this a little bit. So right now, I've added all the points. And if I want to see what's happening here, and if you want to put needlepoint trace, 
we turn to the top and there's the red so we're gonna follow that so we're stitching around follow the red dot that's the direction it's going if that's okay we can leave that alone let's see what happens when, when we change direction here that's still good and that's still good and then that actually the whole thing went around if we needed it to change I can change the direction here um, sewing direction change so if you see the blue line here it's going from the center to this point that's the starting point it the blue line represents a jump which means it's going from one point to the next without sewing so if I wanted to change the direction I can just hit this icon here and then change it I like this and change direction <clears throat> and notice now it's in this direction so what will act in this case what it will actually do it will start here move all the way around and then jump to here to do this around so I have to change everything and in this case I'm going to do that And then I want to change the sequence. So the sequence here, sewing order change. So I want this from here. I'm right, left, and right clicking, changing that. Now, depending upon what version you have, I'm working with 3.31. You could actually have a uh, sewing order change display. And where you can take these things and move them up all over you where you, where you want. This way. All right. Now, again, I'm going to view and see how this works. Um, now, on this needle trace dialog, you can make it go from here on its own. So, watch what it does. Just follow the red dot. Okay, so now everything is all connected. So what I want to do is I want to overlap this. So I'm going to add a point from here. So here is configuration addition. So I'm touching that, but you see the, this blue line lit up. So I've got to kind of move this around until I get to this blue line. And now I'm back at that same point, but this blue this line turned blue so that's the highlight so then I'm gonna put my cursor where I want it to be left click and then right click to get out of it and then what it did it now continued this line over to here and now I'm just gonna move this and fix this into position one two three four five I'm gonna go to here so I'm gonna go configuration point move and I'll go to here and it's probably a good number of stitches to overlap. Can, with my dial on my mouse I can raise this but I'm going to try to get this right onto that point. And then we've got everything all together. And now we should be all set. And you would just save this to the media output and upload to your machine.